Lately, I've been seeing this picture and pictures very similar to it showing up more and more in my news feed. A lot of times a caption will read, Zombie Deer Disease or CWD in humans. Although the caribou in this picture probably did not suffer from CWD, but was more than likely a roadkill that had been plowed to the side of the road then scavenged upon uh, to give it this appearance. Um, the, the name zombie deer disease um, is an interesting one, although it's not very accurate because the, the deer in, in fact are alive, but they take on the appearance and the characteristics of what some might consider uh, zombie-like behavior. But what is chronic wasting disease, or CWD, and is it transmissible to humans as many media outlets are hinting upon? The short answer is no, but there is a catch, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's talk about what CWD is. CWD, commonly referred to as a zombie deer disease, is a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, or TSE, of mule deer, white-tailed deer, elk, moose, and caribou. CWD primarily affects members of the deer family, although transmission of CWD to squirrel monkeys and mice with human genes was shown. In 1967, CWD was first identified in mule deer at a wildlife research facility in northern Colorado, the United States. It was initially recognized as a clinical wasting syndrome, and then in 1978, it was identified more specifically as a TSE. Since then, CWD has spread to free-ranging and captive animal populations in 26 U.S. states and three Canadian provinces. CWD is typified by chronic weight loss leading to death. No relationship is known between CWD and any other TSEs of animals or people. Although reports of popular press have been made of humans being affected by CWD, a study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention suggests more epidemiologic and laboratory studies are needed to monitor the possibility of such transmissions. Epidemiological study further concluded, as a precaution, hunters should avoid eating deer and elk tissues known to harbor the CWD agent, for example, brain, spinal cord, eyes, spleen, tonsils, lymph nodes, for areas where CWD has been identified. Signs and symptoms. Most cases of CWD occur in adult animals. The youngest animal diagnosed with natural CWD was 17 months. The disease is prog progressive and always fatal. The first signs are difficulties in movement, the most obvious and consistent. Clinical sign of CWD is weight loss over time. Behavioral changes also occur in the majority of cases, including decreased interactions with other animals, listlessness, lowering of the head, tremors, repetitive walking and set patterns, and nervousness. Excessive salivation and grinding of the teeth are also observed. Most deer show increased drinking and urination. The increased drinking and salivation may contribute to the spread of the disease. Direct transmission. CWD may be directly transmitted by contact with infected animals, their bodily tissues, and their bodily fluids. Transmission may result from contact with both clinically affected and infected, but asymptomatic cervids. Recent research on Rocky Mountain elk found that the CWD infected dams, many subclinical, a high rate, 80%, of maternal to offspring transmissions of CWD prions occurred, regardless of gestational period. While not dispositive relative to disease development in the fetus, this does suggest that maternal transmission may be yet another important route of direct CWD. So there is the general overview of CWD as a whole. Now, I am from Pennsylvania, and in Pennsylvania, deer hunting is a holiday or religion, quite literally a holiday. It is a state holiday for the first day of deer season. So uh, the Pennsylvania Game Commission is extremely, extremely worried about the cases of CWD in Pennsylvania. And as you could see from the map, from Centers of Disease Control, uh, 
that it is here. It is rooted right in the middle of Pennsylvania. But the question now is indirect um, transmission. Uh, they believe that gut piles from harvested deer that have CWD, that it will harbor that uh, CWD for years. And they are, they have, they are positive of this at this point. Um, so it's becoming an issue of whenever somebody believes that they have harvested a deer with CWD, it, they are um, encouraged to, you know, strongly encouraged to get a hold of the Pennsylvania Game Commission and report their findings so the animal can be tested to see if there are any more positive cases. And another indirect uh, transmission, they believe that uh, whenever crows uh, who are scavengers digest the CWD, that it can pass through the crow into their fecal matter and wherever that lands in the soil or in their roosts, um, it, will, it, can, it can be harbored there in a, in a CWD dam, as it's called, um, for years and years. So there's definitely, it's definitely a scary thing to think about. But when it comes to CWD as a whole, no, the deer are not zombies. And there's no evidence uh, to, to say that human beings can get the CWD at this point. Although the scary part of that was that it was harbored in mice who had human genes in them. So uh, th there is that what if, um, just by the way that that's worded. But as the media is pushing it and trying to uh, make it glorify the whole story, um, no, it's not in humans and humans aren't getting it. But, you know, the never say never. Um, uh, those types of things, you know, can go un unknown for years until science has a way of finding it or it rears its rears its uh, ugly head in and of itself but that is the overview of cwd or zombie deer disease uh, it, it, this stuff's all over the internet it blew up this last week it's all over the media it's all over the news feeds it's all over social media so check it all out get a good understanding of it to see what to look for what you need to do in your area uh, if it's in your area yet or what to look for if you're afraid it's in your area and what the steps are then if you if you observe an animal that is is giving the zombie-like behavior. But that's all for this one. See you guys.